All right, guys, so we got some really cool stuff coming in straight from Oda published by Shonen Jump over the last week, and it's honestly very exciting. The title of the series is called Road to Laugh Tale. Basically, what it is is like a compilation of things that we already know in the story, plus little bits of seasoning here and there to help us piece a lot of secrets together. Now, it doesn't give away everything, but it definitely gives us a little bit more information and compiles all of it in a way that helps us connect the dots a little better. So I'm just going to run through it and react to it give some of my thoughts maybe some theories and speculation if you want go to the tcb scans website and read along with me i'm going to go ahead and leave a direct link for you guys in the description below if you guys are interested now Let's go ahead and jump into it. Deciphering the future of One Piece. So we start off with a recap of all the information we know about Gold Roger. The Great Pirate Era started with the final words of the King of the Pirates, the man who had tamed everything the world had to offer. Now, countless brave warriors are vying for his throne and are also failing. 25 years have passed since Goldie Roger conquered the Grand Line. We get some cool panels with Odin. We have some panels of Roger meeting Tom, the crew singing Binks' Brew or Binks' Sake. I could see Zunisha in there too and the breaking news of Roger becoming the king of the pirates. The birth of the next pirate king is nearly among us. We have an awesome shot of Luffy and Kaido. Okay so I thought this was really cool. Oda gives us a timeline of all the events in Roger's backstory that we know of currently. So 77 years ago is when Roger was born December 31st. I'm curious if that has any sort of meaning to it or if it's just one of those SBS birthday things. He was born in Loketown East Blue as we know and question mark years ago Roger fatefully met Rayleigh. I'm wondering why Oda used a question mark and just didn't give the amount of years ago straight up. It makes me think there might be some meaning behind how many years ago it was or the time period in which it was in, but who knows, I could just be looking into that too much. He'll probably just, you know, throw it out there eventually. The important part of this panel is Roger wearing the straw hat, the iconic straw hat that seems to be passed down from generation to generation to those who end up causing a disturbance or change in the world. So about 50 years ago, was when Roger was a rookie and started to gain prominence as a young pirate. Fast forward to 39 years ago, and that is when he reached Lodestar Island for the first time and realized that you actually need four road poneglyphs to travel to the real last island on the Grand Line, the Secret Island, which he would later name Laugh Tail. Then not long after that, only about a year, they would have their encounter with the Rock's crew, where Roger would fight alongside his rival Garp against the Rock's pirates and for some reason, protecting the Celestial Dragon dragons and their slaves. The fact that all of this information is coming out now is kind of telling me that we're going to be learning a lot more about God's Valley and Rock soon. Probably around the same time we see Blackbeard again and see what he's doing, or around the same time we see the Blackbeard pirates face off against the Straw Hat pirates. 28 years ago is when Roger contracted his incurable disease. Maybe a disease Luffy will end up getting and Chopper will end up curing, helping Chopper reach that dream that he's always had about being able to cure any illness. Again, one year later after that would be when the battle Battle of Ed War took place and Roger faced off against Shiki, another member of the Rox's crew. And it says, despite an overwhelming disadvantage in numbers, Roger chose to face his foe head on, luck smiled on him, and he was able to get through the fierce war zone. If I remember correctly, Shiki in Strong World was very overpowering, but mostly because of his devil fruit. I don't really think Conker's Hockey Coding was a thing back then, but we have to remember that wasn't a canon movie, and I do think if we get any more information about Shiki in the manga, he might be a figure that ends up having that really strong hockey conquers hockey coding possibly so another year after that when roger was 51 years old he realized he needed an extra person to reach that final island laugh tail and that person was kozuki odin it says roger was adamant about recruiting odin even though he was on his rival's crew he was needed to reach the final destination as the samurai could read the ancient characters i remember whitebeard's face when roger was like i need you odin and Whitebeard was just not having it. But of course, Roger would be able to convince Whitebeard and Odin would join his pirate crew and adventure to the final island on the Grand Line, Laugh Tail. At one point along their journey, they reached Skypea, in which Roger had Odin etch a very important text in the story, I hereby guide this document to its end, Pirate Gold D. Roger. Now this quote is actually more important now in this volume, I think, than it ever was before. Because later on in the volume, which we will get to, it explains some more information about the Poneglyphs. 25 years ago was when Roger successfully conquered the Grand Line and named the final island Laugh Tale. He then disappeared.
disbanded the Roger Pirates. The birth of the Pirate King followed by the death of his crew. That's a pretty grim way to put it. After this, when Roger was 53, he voluntarily surrenders himself to the Navy and was executed in Logetown in the East Blue. I know the signs in Logetown for the live action set leaks say Garp defeated Roger, but trust me, that's all world government propaganda bullshit. Right before he turned himself in, he had a final conversation with Whitebeard in which he told Whitebeard a lot of the secrets that were given away on Laugh Tale. So Whitebeard would carry this information with him throughout his journey, which might be how Marco and Blackbeard learned a couple different things. Who knows? He would also entrust his son Ace with his lifelong rival Garp of the Marines to give him a fighting chance. But unfortunately, that didn't really end well. At the end, he used the dying embers of his life to spark a great blaze that would engulf the entire world. Now, this is the coolest part to me because Oda putting all of these little questions together makes me think about them in a different way. It makes me consider some things important that before I didn't really think were that important, like his romance with Rogue. I never really thought that was a huge plot point that was going to be, you know, used in the story, but apparently Rogue could be a very important figure. I mean, she does have the D initial, so maybe that plays into it as well. Roger's sword ace that he named his son after also seems to be of importance. Oda says, is this a flicker of parental love? <laughs> Dad's in one piece. <laughs> we also have Shanks's tears, you know, Shanks crying to Roger after Roger asks a certain question. And then we have what was Roger's ultimate dream, which is also Luffy's secret dream. On the next page, we have a look into the load or road poneglyphs, the keys to laugh tale. The reason why they put load here is because there isn't really a way to distinguish road and load in the Japanese language and also the final island of the Grand Line is called Lodestar. That's where you learn about the poneglyphs that lead to Laugh Tail. So the assumption is that either it's Load Poneglyph, short for Lodestar, or it's Road Poneglyphs. Either way, I think is fine. I'm gonna go with Road Poneglyphs for now, just because that's what I'm more used to. These historical texts are ancient messages that piece together to form a forbidden history. There are at least 30 poneglyphs scattered across the world. Nine of them make up that ancient history, with four Road Poneglyphs that are red, distinguishing them from the others, locating the final island, Laugh Tale. It states, these inscriptions were made 800 years ago to carry on an unknown will. The future was entrusted to the one who can guide these passages to their end. Now again, we get that quote, to their end. What I think it's saying there is that the person who goes to Laugh Tale needs to guide those nine poneglyphs to its end to create the real poneglyph, the one with the entire history of the void century and all of these ancient secrets. So what are the hidden truths that are chiseled onto these stones? The Kozuki clan transcribed the messages. So somebody gave the information and the Kozuki clan wrote down all of the information with their own secret language. Together, these stones will reveal the existence of a certain great kingdom. This kingdom is said to have stood in opposition to what would one day become the world government, and it likely holds an enormous secret. I also think this is really cool. Oda gives us a comparison between where the road poneglyphs were in the past and where they are now in the present. Of course, with us not really knowing where that last fourth road poneglyph is, but he does give us three specific islands that it could be on, and I'll give my thoughts on that in a second. But basically in the past, we have the road poneglyphs being on Zo in Big Mom's possession, Fishman Island, and Wano Country. A quick important note is that Oda mentions that the road poneglyph on Wano was close enough or easily accessible enough to where Roger could go and grab the prince of it in just a few hours. So the road poneglyph must be close by and a place that's very accessible and easy for the straw hats to get to. So in the present day, the road poneglyphs that we know of are located on Zo, Whole Cake Island, Wano Country, and we don't know yet. Now, I think the next arc is going to be Elbaf. And during that arc, I think we are going to get a confrontation with the Blackbeard Pirates. I also think the red-haired pirates are involved. Now, I think either Blackbeard has the road poneglyph in his possession or the road poneglyph is going to be on Elbaf. When the Blackbeard Pirates finally face the straw hats, I feel like that battle is going to be for the final road poneglyph. And of course, the winner is the one who gets to finally go to Laugh Tale. Oda also puts in Vera, which is an island mentioned by Nami really early on in the series. Honestly, I'm not that on board with it being a possibility. I think either Full Ahead or Elbaf is much more likely, but Oda put it here, so Vera must be important in some way. There are other islands Oda puts here too, but I mean, Oda specifically pointed out these three islands, so I think the Rogue Poneglyph must be on one of them. All right, now for the juicy stuff. Roger's strongest adversary, the mythical rocks. Now, maybe I'm reading too much 
much into this, but it's very interesting that he put the word mythical there. I mean, we know that Rox and Blackbeard are intrinsically connected. It's rumored that Blackbeard could have a third devil fruit. It's probably a mythical zone. And it's very interesting to me that Oda would put the word mythical next to Rox's name here. I don't know, just kind of putting little things together here. Like I said, Oda sprinkles little things throughout this volume that kind of lead me to feel certain ways about some things. Now, I'm not going to go crazy over that, but it is interesting. Roger's most formidable foe was a renowned heinous pirate. Let's take a look at the man whose ambition led him to violate the world's greatest taboos. I mean, the world's greatest taboos sometimes are literally like existing if you're a fisherman. So I, I, I don't know. The world's taboos are kind of, you know, not cool. So we get a little timeline here for rocks. 44 years ago, the formation of the rocks pirates took place on the pirate island full ahead, which is now Blackbeard's base. A bunch of powerful individuals band together with the promise of landing a big score. I think that big score is God's Valley, but who knows? It could be something else a little bit more minor. This is also the time where rocks would recruit Kaido onto his crew. As we saw, in Kaido's very brief backstory. I still wish there was more. 38 years ago is when the God's Valley incident would take place. Roger and Garp fight together to save a group of celestial dragons and their slaves from the ultimate crew, the Rocks Pirates. That's still weird to me, man. I, I don't know what's going on there. I cannot imagine for a second why Roger, of all people in Garp, who hates the celestial dragons, would want to protect them. I get the slave part, but like, let Rocks kill all the celestial dragons. Why, why do we care? After the battle, God's Valley was erased from the annals of history, never to appear here again. Maybe through the power of Emu or Uranus or some sort of tool under the world government's wing that they use to get rid of inconveniences. The total collapse of Rox's crew followed that event, but that's not all. After the Rox crew disbanded, all of the members of the crew would end up becoming very prominent figures in the world. Big Mom, Kaido, Whitebeard, Shiki, Captain John, and even lesser known ones like Silver Axe or Ochoku. One interesting fact here is that Whitebeard and Shiki had a sort of mutual respect for each other due to the amount of time they crossed blades with Roger and lived to tell the story. Kaido's devil fruit seems to have an inexplainable connection to his past with Big Mom. What happened in the aftermath of God's Valley? Big Mom says, Kaido, you owe me for life. And now they're both burning under Onigashima. The one who uses Zebek's name, Blackbeard. Pack your bags onto the ship. Why let the Navy reap the reward when I stand to gain from this? Blackbeard is making his move. We don't know what it is yet, but it looks like he's gunning to get something. I think it might be the Roponoglyph. Blackbeard's ship is known as the Saber of Zebek. Is there some sort of deeper connection here? Could his design still threaten the world? I think Blackbeard sees Rox as a sort of mentor or role model figure, kind of similarly to how Luffy sees Goldie Roger. It's definitely interesting how Blackbeard names his ship after Rocks de Zebek and how his home base is literally where the Rocks pirates form. I don't know if I'm on board with the idea that there's some sort of a relation there, but I definitely think there's a deeper connection as stated in this text. The rest of the volume is just sketches that I'll briefly skim through. We have the Straw Hats raid outfits and the Straw Hat samurai gear, some cool sketches. We even got Zeus in here and what seems to be sunny, I think, in the corner there. Maybe Oda was planning for film red while drawing this together. Below, we have that really cute scene with Luffy and Tama, where Luffy gives Tama the straw hat, which I always really, really liked. An interesting thing I thought they added here was an alternate Onigashima infiltration concept. The iconic scene where the three captains of the worst generation swoop in to save Kinemon and the others was only devised after several concept scenarios were abandoned. And I think we can see kind of the same thing happening with Robin over here on the left, because in this sketch right here, we have Robin in her new demon form, but in the actual panel, Robin is not in her demon form. So it looks like either an editor made a note or a change or Oda just had a change of heart and went with introducing Robin's new form at the end of the chapter instead of earlier in the chapter. It's always interesting to note that there's a lot of different scenarios that could have played out instead of the ones that we got. On the next page, we have an awesome sketch next to a somewhat goofy sketch of Kozuki Odin. The incredible Kozuki Odin impacted the future of all samurai. The details of his life right down to the manner in which he spoke were refined many times as shown in the concept notes. That's really cool how on his sketches he also puts their mannerisms as well to try to get an idea for how the character is going to carry themselves. Below Odin we have a sketch for adult Momonosuke which just looks super badass. I think it's one of my favorite character designs in Wano next to Yamato and Green Bull. We have a lot of scabbard sketches as well. These look like they were drawn a long time ago. I mean we got introduced to Kinemon at Punk Hazard. We got introduced to Raizo at Zo. So I would assume most of these sketches probably took place before the time skip. So these are sketches from more than a decade ago. 
That's pretty crazy. Finally, we have Shimotsuki Kozaburo sketches and Shimotsuki Ushimaro along with the other daimyos, Uzuki Tempura and Fugetsu Omotsubi. I'm really happy that we're getting something during break and it's not just four weeks of nothing. You know, we have the film coming out, we have the live action going on, and now we're getting three, I think three more volumes of The Road to Laugh Tale with additional information. I think the next one is gonna be about Shanks and Blackbeard's confrontation. I've heard rumors, so I'm really, really excited. Speaking of the live action though, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. So if you're interested in learning everything about the live action, I really want to encourage you to click this video right here.